You know the English had talking horses. Howdy viewers, Brad Prider, Barstool Entertainment, doing what should be my final Red Dead Redemption 2 video. After having completed 100% and still exploring the world, there's plenty of stuff out there, even after the game says you completed 100%. I showed the final four horses, um, a few other things. I will probably leave some links below in the description. But I kind of wanted to wrap this up with some conversations and encounters and, and even show you some locations in this video. It's going to be a long one, so be patient. But thank you for watching. Let's get on with locations and conversations. What you reading, Jackie boy? It's, uh, it's about night. Night. <laughs> Brave men, old England. That's ridiculous. What do you mean? Hi there, John. The English aren't brave, Jackie. <laughs> now, I once beat up six Englishmen in a bar in Canada and knocked them all out. Really? Oh, why? Other well, accents just, just gets on a fella's nerves, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you something strange that isn't in that book of yours. Do you know the English had talking horses? You're kidding me. I never lied, Jackie boy. I met them talking horses in Canada. Brian was his name. <laughs> There's just one problem, though. What? Yeah. Horses is boring as hell. <laughs> Worse than Englishmen. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Shut up. Bet you don't think your pa's such an idiot now you've seen old uncle again. <laughs> He's a colorful fella. <laughs> yeah, ignore him, okay? Don't mind me. Okay, sir. You're confusing the boy. Oh, he's fine. Confused already with you for a parent. Between you and me and everything else, there's no damn hope for him. You stay safe now. Well, we burned the breeze long enough, I reckon. That is actually what I love about Red Dead Redemption 2. You dip into someone's conversation, you interact. The world is so rich. You encounter a lot of different things and a lot of different people. And I've played this game three times, and I keep finding interesting stuff, including people you run into. How you doing? The fire's warm. You're welcome to share it with me. You trust me then? Sometimes we must trust each other, even when we don't know each other, or else we walk this life alone. For all I know, you're a thief and a killer, but I rely on my instincts to tell me otherwise. Yes, I see in your eyes that you're not a bad man. Like I was riding through the heartlands the other day and caught through someone's land. Looked like an old pig farm. When a couple called me over from the house. Very nice man and woman. Very friendly. You would think this is fine, you know? And they keep saying that a traveler like me deserves some rest and refreshment. Inviting me to stay for dinner. I was tired and I was hungry, but mi corazonada, the feeling in my gut said no. I don't know why, but I trusted it. 
And the very next day, a man warns me to stay away from that place. So I live by my instincts. I'm also real fast with a gun, which helps me when the instincts fail me. Well, I've sat long enough. We rest here as long as you need. This guy warns John about the pig farmer and his incest wife, but Arthur already took care of that couple, and so there should be no problem there. The next guy I meet, well, I've come across the tent he was at before, and I'm going to let you see what happens. Hey there, friend. Want to take the weight off? Fire is good and hot. Mi casa su casa, friend. Thank you. So you got a girl, mister? Me neither. Got my eye on one, though. I was hunting north of Annisburg when I came across this cabin. And there's no one there but this woman. Bit bony, but beautiful as the day is long. Real elegant fancy type, too. I see how you like them, too, friend. Don't know what she's doing out there in the middle of nowhere, but turns out she's a widow. She asked me to leave, but in a real nice way. M made me feel good. I watched her from the bushes for a while, saw her cry. I think this is a place I could really hang my saddle. A hot dinner and warm bed every night. Mmm, don't sound bad to me at all. All right, I need to cool down a bit. You know, I can't... Have we met before someplace? Me? No, I don't think so. I just look like a lot of people. Hell no. Nuh-uh. This is the last thing I need. Now, when I was exploring, I actually encountered this tent, but no one was there by the campfire. The guy's a little creepy and a little weird. Uh, the tent itself is filled with, how shall I say, adult material that would be very risque for the time frame. And the guy himself, the way he was talking, kind of a stalker. Now, you can loot the tent and other stuff of valuables, and I suggest if you come across it, do so. But on the map here, I'll show you exactly where the tent is. Um, eh, I'll jump to there, Arthur, and it's right here. It's below Osman Grove and above the pig farm. It's right between the two of them on a hill, and it's kind of south of, south, I want to say, east of Emerald Station, but you'll come upon it. Maybe the guy's there, maybe he isn't, but he's kind of a creepy stalker dude. Now, the next thing I'm going to deal with is bumping into some interesting people. And this one is going to be a couple people and then move on to something else. Hey. Hey, I like this song. You're okay, know that? The gentleman is at Butcher's Creek, and if you bump into him during the day, he plays some fun songs. The next two people you find in St. Denis, one I think I already did before, but let's move on.
Howdy, mister. You, sir, do you want a pamphlet? I suppose so. You're making a wise choice. I cannot tell you how many people are happy to imagine a world in which their children are monkeys or half horses. It's simply shocking. Shocking. Shocking, I say. The pamphlet is basically eugenics garbage. So yeah, no need to really read through it. But the next person I encounter and I've done a video before is Miss Tilly. She's always been one of my favorites. I'll leave a link below to that video. So let's talk to Miss Tilly. Let me vote John. John Marston. Miss Tilly. That's Mrs. Tilly to you. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. I'm well. Well and happy and I miss you and Abigail. She's well. Jack's well. All is well, I think. I, I never thanked you for what you did. Oh, there's the trolley. I still think about all of you all the time. My life, it's different now. Mine too. But I still see a bunch of Charles and Uncle and Sadie. So not quite so different as Abigail would like. <laughs> I married a lawyer. He's a fine man. We live in a house. Us too. I'm sorry. I've got to go. I'm late. But can I write to you and Abigail someplace? Yeah, we're up at Beecher's Hope. Over in Great Plains, West Elizabeth. I'll try. Be well, John Marston. Next group of videos is just John helping some people out. And you come across people at times, they need help. You help them out, you get a little extra honor. Every inch of God's dominion is parceled up and sold off. Permits is required, and your man Geddes should know it. <laughs> You're nothing but a ruffler. You teaching the new ways, partner? Uh, hey, farm no permit to bear. You're about to get yourself We're fine, out. ain't we? This is Larry, man. Now you hear? Uh, 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 Just some cattle rustling. Don't know if I did any good, but took down some Laramie brothers and whatever they are. See if I can uh, get me some gold. Anyway, the next one is John. He's helping out some people who are being accosted by bandits. You ain't got much work taken. Just fine. Isn't that right, dear? Not today, it won't. There's something here. Help! Help! Don't know where to keep your nose out. Will you look at that? Thank you, sir. We'll keep you in our prayers. Wow, used a varmint rifle on these guys. Well, I helped a couple out. John gets some honor and a few dollars from the bad guys. Now, the next things I'm going to show are just random encounters you can find in exploring. This one is a church outside of Armadillo. There's guy burning bodies. Yeah, this is interesting. Lord, you're heavy. Hey, whoa. Keep your distance, friend. These bodies ain't safe to be around. Oh. <clears throat> huh. 
What's wrong with them? Aside from being dead. You ain't heard about the cholera plague in Armadillo? Most of the towns either died or up and left. So, why are you burning them? It's what the town folk want. Trying to stop the spread. Terrible business. But lucrative, I have to say. And of course, you're going to run into some random KKK members from time to time. Calm down on this right quick now. I ought to ditch y'all. Can't do shit right. You said there'd be 25 people here. Patience. There's nobody here, dang it. This is a lost cause. Oh, careful. Oh, man, that's dangerous. Yeah, assholes. Jesus, did the robes go? Run for his friends! And now a really interesting encounter I had while playing as Arthur. I was by Willard's Rest and I came upon a dude leading an ox. Very, how shall I say, Skyrim. And at first I thought the guy was leading the ox, but eventually the ox kind of decided it wasn't going to follow him. And I decided to have a conversation and go from there. Howdy. Hey, partner. How's it going? Ain't but shit. All right, well, good luck. All the best to you, friend. Good luck out there. The ox was no longer following the guy, but it made an interesting choice. It was going to cross the river via the railroad tracks, and I had to check it out. Whoa, easy. Yeah. The ox was a three star, so you can never have too many three-star ox pelts if you want to complete trapper um, items. So, yeah, I took advantage and, well, I have a three-star ox pelt. Now, this area I'm going to show you, I encountered as Arthur a few times, but I didn't think it would happen as John. And it's where Micah camps out before him and Arthur go rob stagecoach 
that leads to an ambush by O'Driscoll's? Well, I'm going to show you Micah's camp. If you come to an area just outside of Strawberry and, how shall I say, near the um, Applewood Timber right here, and you wind up, you'll find some scraps. Didn't think these scraps of paper would exist after the epilogue, but they did. The next is I finally got the parakeets to spawn. In the past two playthroughs, I never got them to spawn. This time, I got them to spawn. What I did is I rode to the orchard. I rode back and forth along the coast. Even pointed the gun into the air and looked out into the air. Eventually, the parakeets did spawn. Is that all? Good ride, girl. I had a devil of a time even in my third playthrough. I wanted to get them to spawn and they finally did. I'm going to show you a hunting location and I've shown other hunting locations. This is where I found rats quite regularly and they are three star but you can end up getting interrupted by a fox once in a while and yeah the little bastard will chase the rats away. Rats reliably spawn right at this location. There's a two star right there. There's usually more. And I'll show you this location. And it is on the map here, Bulger Glade, right here by the O, right at this area. And if you walk away and come back, there will be rats there. I mean, I'm just... This has been one area where they seem to reliably spawn for me. And again, you just walk away and come back. The rats will spawn.
John has run away far enough. Now I'm going to put a marker down to get the location precise. And when John returns, there should be more rats there. Again, that stupid fox screwed things up a little bit, but if you're quick enough, you can get a three-star rat, maybe a couple. And this is a place that, like I said, you can run away and come back. There will be rats again. It's a reliable spawning point, and you can try it for yourself. Finally, lockbox locations. If you picked up lockboxes as Arthur, and you have favorite places you want to pick them up, return as John, the lockboxes respawn. This location that I'm showing you is by Lake Oangela, and it is the abandoned wagon. If you come to this place, you might find guy panning for gold, but the lockbox contains gold nuggets. I found it as Arthur, now I'm returning as John, and you can loot this lockbox. I'll show you on the map here, right here at this river area, just northwest of Oangela. You get two gold nuggets. That's not bad. The next lockbox I'll show you is near where you hunt the legendary beaver, and it actually has some decent loot. There's some hummingbird sage nearby. You can pick that if you want. But this lockbox is actually under a tree stump, and you can see it right here, or a fallen tree. There's also a looted wagon. You might encounter some murphy. But once you pull this lockbox out, there is some cash, I believe. Yep, a billfold and a large jewelry bag. Again, worth looting. I will show you the location on the map. And it's right here, just southeast of the legendary beaver hunt and beaver dam worth looting to wrap this video up there is a location um where john has arthur's stash an oil wagon for the pouring pouring forth oil uh event and i decided to investigate this cabin it's called trail rise cabin and there's some interesting stuff within the cabin.
nothing in the chimney, so I am done. There is plenty of stuff around. Again, you're familiar with this location, Trail Rise Cabin. John has Arthur put an oil wagon next to it, and it's just above this stable. Well, viewers, this should be my final Red Dead Redemption 2 video for a while until I start my fourth playthrough. If you like this video and found it informative, hit the thumbs up button. Feel free to leave some comments. If you like this type of video, hit the subscribe button and bell icon. I post five video game related videos a week, Monday through Friday, plus some specials and other things on the weekends and you don't want to miss out. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and most of all, thanks for stopping by.